the bell icon to turn on notifications. In this section, we're going to take a look at how we can create our own workflows from scratch. Now, so far in this course, we've created workflows that are manually triggered and also ones that are automatically triggered. But both times that we've done this, we've been using a template that's available from within Power Automate. This time, we're basically going to create this same workflow that we created here for Twitter, but I'm going to show you how you can build it from scratch. And when we build a workflow from scratch, it means that we create our own triggers and our own actions. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go across to my menu on the left hand side and we want to click on the create option. And this takes us into that page that should look reasonably familiar. This is where we can choose to start from a blank, start from a template or start from a connector. Now remember, the flow that we want to create is a flow that sends us an email every time a certain keyword is posted on Twitter. So this is still an automated process, so I'm going to start from a blank and choose Automated Cloud Flow. So now I can give my flow a name. And I'm just going to call this Deb's Flow so it's easy to identify, and let's say Twitter. Now straight away I'm being asked to choose a trigger for my flow. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to skip over this section for the time being. So let's just click skip because this essentially takes us into the diagram for our flow and it's a lot easier to see all of our different triggers and actions. And if you take a look at the pane at the bottom, here is a list of all of the different triggers and then I also have a list of all of the different possible actions. And I like doing it this way because there are so many triggers and actions, I like to be able to search using the search bar at the top for the specific ones that I want. So get yourselves to this stage and then in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how we can create our own trigger. So now that we've created our flow, it's time for us to create the trigger. So remember, the trigger is the event which kicks off this flow. Now we're building a flow that is going to send us an email when a tweet with a certain keyword is posted. So the trigger is going to be the tweet with the keyword. So if I want to create a trigger within this flow, I'm going to need one of the Twitter connectors. Now, as you can see at the bottom here, I'm currently looking at all of the triggers. I can click see more to see more of them. I could scroll through all of these looking for the specific one that I want, but because we have triggers for all different kinds of applications, this could be extremely time consuming. So we're going to want to narrow down our search. So the easiest thing to do here is in that search box at the top, we're going to type in Twitter. And you can see immediately those results have been narrowed down. And I have this one just here, when a new tweet is posted. And this is exactly the connector that we want to use. So let's click to select it. So this is now our action. And you can see at the top here, the only field that we need to complete is the search text. So what is the keyword that we're searching for? What are we interested in? Because we're using a connector, Microsoft have already put together all of the elements required to trigger this workflow within this connector, but the search text is essentially a variable. And so we are left to define that ourselves. So we're going to keep this the same as last time. I'm interested in all tweets that contain the word Excel. Now you can see when I click away, Power Automate has given me a useful little pop-up tip there telling me to add my next step. And it says add steps one at a time until you create the flow you want. So let's do exactly that. I'm going to click on new step. And you can see now at the bottom, it's jumped me across two actions. Now we're going to add one action, but remember when you're building more complex workflows, you, you could add multiple actions from one trigger. Now, once again, when it comes to adding an action, we have a huge long list down here. So we're going to want to refine our list. Now there are all different things that we could pick as our action. So remember, our trigger is the posting of a tweet that contains the word Excel. So what do I want the action to be? Well, we're going to choose to receive an email from Outlook. 
But if you wanted to, you could maybe get this flow to, instead of sending you an email, to post something on Teams. So if I was searching for that action, I could type in Teams at the top here, and it's going to pull up a list of all of the different actions available for the Teams connector. If I prefer to use Gmail as opposed to Outlook for my mail, I could type in Gmail and then I can see all of the different options that I have for Gmail. If I'm not sure which one I want to use, I could type in the actual action. So I could say send an email. And then I can see the actions that I have available. So I can send an email notification through the mail app. I can send it through Outlook. I can send it as a notification, so on and so forth. And I could scroll through the list and browse my options. However, we are going to send an email through Outlook. Now, the reason why I tend to use the Outlook connector as opposed to the mail connector is that I've found that sometimes this mail connector can be a little bit patchy. There's many times when I've created workflows and I've used the mail connector as opposed to the Outlook one, and I haven't actually received my email notification. And I did have a quick look online to see if there was any resolution to this. It seems to be a reasonably common problem, which can happen sometimes. So in order to avoid all of that mess, I tend to choose the Outlook connector. So let's choose this one, send an email, Office 365 Outlook. So now you can see the fields that are required for this particular action. So we need to have something in the to field. So this means we need to specify an email address. I need to specify a subject, and then we can build up what we want it to say in the body of this email. Now we could go through and hard code all of these values in and create the body of the email, but a much better way of doing this is to add dynamic content. And I've mentioned this a few times throughout this course, but we haven't really looked at it in detail yet. And the reason why we would use dynamic fields instead, particularly in the body of this email, is that we're probably going to have different information every single time. So because I'm being informed about a tweet, I might want to know who posted the tweet, the time that the tweet was posted. I want to see the tweet information. Now that's going to be different every single time. So if we use dynamic content, which is basically some predefined fields, it's going to pull all of that information into the email for me. And that's exactly what we're going to look at in the next lesson. So we're currently in our flow. We've created a trigger, which is when a new tweet is posted containing the search term Excel, we want to receive an email. And in that email, I want to have all of the details of that particular tweet. And this is where we're going to use some dynamic content fields. Now, all three of these fields just here to subject and body are required. They have an asterisk next to them. We cannot save or run this flow unless we have something filled in in here. So let's go to the to field. Now I'm going to type in my email address because this is where I want the tweets or the notification of the tweet to go to. I then need to complete a subject. So what do I want the subject line to say? Now notice, as soon as I click in this subject field, I get this little pop-up window on the right-hand side, which is showing me a list of the dynamic content fields that I can add. And it might be that you want to use one of these in the subject. Now you don't have to, you could maybe have a subject of new tweet posted containing the word Excel, something like that. But what if you want to have maybe the username of the person who sent the tweet in the subject? because that's going to be different every single time, depending on who posted the tweet. Well, this is where we can use a dynamic content field. So maybe in the subject, I want to say Excel mentioned on Twitter by, and then I want the username. So what I can do here is I can go through my dynamic content fields and choose the correct one. So if I take a look through here, I can see the second one down says tweeted by, and that's going to pull the name of the user who has posted the tweet. Now there's tweeted by, and there's also username. So it depends which one you want. Do you want the actual name that they have in their Twitter profile, which is more often than not their real name, or do you want their username, the screen name? Now I'm going to use username in this instance. I can then build up the body in the same way using these dynamic content fields to pull through the information that I'm interested in. So I might say something in the body like a new tweet has been posted on Twitter containing the word X. 
black cell. And then underneath, I might want to have the tweet information. And then I'm going to use a dynamic content field. So the first one here is tweet text. So let's choose that so I can see the actual tweet. I'm going to hit enter. Maybe then I want to see who it was tweeted by. And for this one, I'm going to grab the name of the user who has posted this tweet. Maybe I want to see the location from where the tweet was posted. Again, I can choose a piece of dynamic content called location. And then let's add one more. Maybe I want to see when the tweet was posted. So let's say tweet posted. And if I take a look through, if we scroll down, I can see this one here fits the description. So created at time at which the tweet was posted. So using these dynamic fields, I can run this workflow over and over again. And each time it's going to pull through the correct content because I haven't hard coded this information into the email. Now, when you're going through building up an action like this and using dynamic content fields, it's always good to check that you don't have any errors in your workflow as you're going through. So I'm going to click the flow checker in the top corner just to make sure I have no errors and no warnings. I don't seem to. So let's click on save. And now let's try testing out this workflow. So I'm going to click on the test button. I'm going to test it manually and click on test. So now Power Automate is going to go away and you can see I've got that squirrely circle in the middle because it's currently checking Twitter for any tweets that mention Excel. And there's always quite a few tweets every hour. So I would expect some notifications to start coming through pretty soon. So I can see that my flow has run successfully and there is my first Outlook notification letting me know about a tweet that contains the word Excel. There's the second one. As I said, this is a very popular search term. Lots of people posting about Excel. If I jump across to my Outlook account, you can see here they all come and take a look at what I can see. The subject of the email Excel mentioned on Twitter by and then we have their username. Take a look at the body of the email because this was using those dynamic content fields. I can see the tweet information just here. I can see who it was tweeted by. Now this user hasn't provided a location, so I don't have anything in there, but I can see when that tweet was posted. If we go to the next notification, you can see for this one, they have actually got a location listed. And so it's completed that as well. So I can see that that is working pretty well. Let's jump back to my flows. There is my new flow at the top. Now I can see that the name that I gave it, if you remember, I called it Deb's test flow Twitter hasn't actually updated. So let's deal with that. I'm going to click on my flow and in this flow details screen, let's click the edit button on the right hand side. And there we have flow name. So let's make sure we change that. So Deb's test flow. And I think we called it Twitter. So there we go. Save. That looks a lot better. Let's go back to my flows. And there we go. That's a lot easier for me to identify. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can utilize those dynamic content fields in your flows. I'm just going to finish this section by just talking a little bit about editing the flow and a little bit more about testing the flow. Now, if you want to jump in and edit your flow, you can hover over the flow and you can see you get this little pencil icon. And if you click that, it's going to take you into your flow diagram. You can expand these fields and make whatever changes you need. Don't make the mistake of actually clicking on the flow. So if we go back to my flows and if we just click on this flow, now this is where you would come to edit the details of the flow. So I can click the edit button here. As we saw before, I can change my flow name and my flow description. Also, if I need to make any changes to my connections, I have an edit button over here as well. It's going to show me all of the connections in use and I can edit these if I need to. So kind of two different areas when it comes to editing, depending on what you're wanting to edit. If you want to edit the actual trigger and the action, click on the pencil icon. Otherwise, click on the name of the flow. Now we're going to make a small change to this flow. Let's expand the action. So let's make a change to our dynamic content fields. I'm going to click at the bottom and let's add something else in. Maybe I want to know what the tweet 
ID is as well. So let's add our piece of dynamic content. I'm going to choose Tweet ID. Let's click our flow checker just to make sure that we still have no errors and no warnings. Let's save. And now I'm going to test. Now, when we clicked test last time, we manually triggered the flow. But if this workflow has already run previously, what you could do is make your life a little bit easier by selecting automatically and with a recently used trigger. And it's going to show you all of the times this flow has run previously. You can select one of these and it just means it's going to use the settings for the trigger from a previous run. So let's click on test. My flow ran successfully once again, and doing it that way is just a little bit quicker, particularly if you have quite a complex trigger. So just a couple of little tips and tricks there for editing your flows and also testing them. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.